G'day guys, Calvin from the Cartoon Company in New Zealand. We are going to talk about some diagnostics today. DLC1, DLC2, and DLC3. Data Link Connector, DLC. And once we've talked about that, I want to talk about failsafe or limp mode and this is I'm going to look at, at mainly one of the limp modes because I see it a lot and people go off on the wrong tangent we're going to start off very quickly because I've just wired this one up it, it didn't have this before but this is a, a universal type relay setup it just plugs into I've, I've Change eight wires here, and this one's a little bit custom with the three extras. It plugs in, runs the engine. And I've got another video on that. This particular harness is off to Adam, and I've gone through it, and I have modified DLC1, okay, the one on the engine. If you go to a garage, and some models, you can get some information, but certainly the later UCF20, like this one, and most of the Lexus don't have the right ones. Most of the, the LS400s do not have the right wires in them. Okay, so if the mechanic opens the bonnet, tries to plug into the DLC data link connector on the engine, tell him he's going into the wrong one. Look for the one under the dash. However, I modify them, so if it's one of my conversion looms, you can get into it with a scan tool, and the information is close. I'm going to check that, check I get communications, and then we'll talk about DLC2. So I have my temporary check light set up and I have communication with my scan tool. I did not use Lexus LS400, I used generic Toyota. So the scan tool goes in and it is bringing up a, a cooling fan pressure switch. Funnily enough, um, we don't have the cooling fan connected because I've deleted it and that won't cause a problem. It should bring up uh, sub oxygen sensors too because I've deleted them and they don't cause any problems. So that is DLC1. It's not the normal diagnostic port. Okay? I can get in because I've modified it. The normal one is DLC2. I think it's a 17 pin semicircle, they call it. DLC2. Is found under the dash. See? Under the dash. There it is. Whee! Under there. So now I've popped in to DLC2. Data link connector 2. 17 pin, semicircle, under the dash. And I can go into it and test just like the other one. Of course, I've modified the other one, so this is the correct one. This is the one you want to see your garage connect into. Um, actually, I was, <laughs> I'm going under generic Toyota. I've got to go under Lexus. I'm, I'm going under Lexus LS400, has a UCF20. Now, in my tool, I have four options for UCF20. I have the earlies, the pre-96. 96, 97, and I've got a late one, that's OBD2, the last of them, that's the last of the non-VVTI, and then I've got UCF20 VVTI, and this is a whole lot of fun because they all have got a slightly different protocol, they're just a little bit different in the way they work, and that causes problems. And that's what we're going to get into. We're going to move into that OBD2. This one's coming through. 
Now the real basic function is when you bridge TE1 to ground. E1 is an earth. So TE1 to E1, earth, it flashes the check light, like so. And you can count the check codes. Should be bringing it up. Here it is. Here's my code. The next one it does to get the live data or the current data is it bridges TE2 or T2 to ground. And that's like when you push start on your cell phone. You know, you need someone to pick up on the other end, so you have to call them. And, and that's what TE2 does. It just initializes the communications. In OBD2, it's different because that communication line is always open. Just got to check here that we've got some information. It looks good. And I just open the throttle position and that gives me uh, a reading that's changing, showing that I've got communication. This one gives me a temperature. So it's telling me today that it's nine degrees. It's been pretty much nine degrees for a while. The other one, it gives me a voltage. We're going to talk about that another day with temperatures, temperature sensors and voltages. But what if I plug in an OBD2 ECU to this? I know that this is a Japanese OBD1 ECU. At the moment it's turned on. And you can see the engine check light is on. And that's, that's fine. If I go over here, TE1, got my little bridging wire here, to E1 or Earth, I could just do it to the block. Look at that. And that check light will now flash. I could read those codes and look at a chart, easy. I could do the same test if your DLC1 has an engine check light over here, which is W, watch. I can check it there as well. Goes through the sequence. And long codes, there's, that's long, so that's tens. And those are a little bit shorter. Those are individual, so that's code 56. I could also, we're going to put my check light back here. Sorry, we're going to put the check light back there. I could also do the same test in here. TE1 and E1, be like that. And we should get the same result. Here it goes. One big difference between the one under the bonnet, DLC1, and two is I have to power up my scan tool manually. So that's that's quite important. And it's why guys sometimes have trouble. The one under the dash, the LC2, does not have power feed into it. So I'm going to remove the Japanese ECU. And we're going to fit a equivalent, and you can see right here, see the header plug is, in, is offset, so we know that it's UCF20, and this is a, a US domestic market OBD2 ECU. Plugging them in. We're now powered up. Reinsert my check light, and we have a check light. So that works. I take my little tool. It's only flashing because my light isn't in the right place. Right. We bridge. That one won't have it. 
that one will not exist. So we'll do it over here. TE1. And E1. It just stays on. OBD2 was quite new back in the late 90s. And it was designed to have a standardized system. I think the, the uh, I think Mercedes, I think BMW kind of gave everyone the big finger for a while and said, no, we're not going to do it. But I'm pretty sure they caught up. And everyone was just a little unsure and it was a little bit shaky and things were a bit weird. That happens. And of course, now I've, I've plugged in a, a US domestic market OBD2. They don't have a hydraulic fan. So it shouldn't have a code for a hydraulic fan, should it? Because they didn't exist. So I'm going to give it another code. Let's unplug some stuff. See if we can get it to induce a code. Let's give it a airflow meter code. And maybe a throttle position code. Not that I can unplug it. There it is. So still no flash code. Let's see if I can swap to an OBD2 plug, which I conveniently wired earlier, and get into that ECU. This time I will go into a USA. Um, I think the UK's. So some in the UK also had OBD2. And this time, I've got a big long list of different cars to choose from. And hopefully it tells me OBD2 connector, it does. You'll see it's flashing here. Well, it was, here it goes. That's a good sign. It wasn't a good sign. Let's try this one. And my tool didn't work on LS400. This is getting old. When I brought this tool, it was the state of the art. It was the ducks nuts of off scan tools. Now it's old. However, I got on just fine with OBD2. Generic OBD2, and I'm into this. So I brought up some fault codes. You see here, not that you can really see them. It's getting a bit old, the screen, but it says MAF or VAF. Uh, IAT. Shift solenoid A, B, and E. So that's, that's good. It's actually brought up codes. Didn't bring up the TPS, but it may require the engine to start to give that code. So that's really good. I'm happy we've got communications. And I'll do a video at one point about removing those transmission codes. And I'm just clearing those fault codes. I'll, I'll come back straight back. You'll notice the check light, even with things bridged, is just staying on. If I started this engine, that check light would stay on. I've plugged the TPS back in to see if I get readings. Full throttle, 63%. That's pretty normal for a Toyota. All cleared, and I've only got those trans ones left. And I think this might be our transmission fault because I removed it. So I've shown how we can get in with a scan tool on the diagnostic ports. And that's really, really helpful for everyone who's got a scan tool. What about 
these little generic OBD2 dongle things. Let's see if I can get in to that OBD2 computer with this one. Are these the best? No, but I find they work really, really well on the ones that I work on. They don't work on the 3UZs, just different protocols again. So, out with the scan tool, in with the dongle, and out with the cell phone. So I'm using the Talk app, and I'm not using the free one, I'm using the paid for one. And it's just searching for right now. Checking model, ECU OK. So I am in. Oh, today, coolant, now telling me it's 8 degrees. Whew. We've got little lights flashing everywhere. Of course, it's not running, so it's got no revs, but we can check that throttle position. Sixty-two point sixty-three percent. It's pretty normal. And can I read some fault codes? Fuel trims there. Intake temp of eleven degrees. Whew. Right, fault codes. Let's have a look. Tap here for fault codes. Powertrain A, B, and E. Look at that. We've got fault codes. OBD2, OBD2, into my smartphone. We've got communication. <laughs> when I originally started on this topic, I thought I would do two videos. This morning I changed my mind. And I thought I might try and put it in one. But I think I've babbled on for long enough now. And I think the message would really be lost if I, I added in failsafe at this point. So let's make this number one, part one. And I'll come back soon and, and we'll do part two. I'll continue with the, the OBD2 one. And I'll show you a little bit about some different failsafes and talk about that. Or limp modes. So I hope that's been helpful. We'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later.